okay it's allowing me to put my video on now there you go <laughs> it wouldn't let me yeah do we that. can see you all <laughs> it's good to see you i'm coming to you live from my boat in the heart of england so uh, we travel full time and build we're building three global businesses from this boat right now and um and online companies as well we've got over a thousand mini courses and online products that we now have that are out there in the world serving making an impact and uh, obviously making an income as well so guys if you've got any questions about how you can do that or what you would like to see happening I, i'm happy to to be here and brainstorm with you if you've got an idea that you'd like to take to market i'm all yours for this time that we have together okay uh, uh sammy uh my name is Farooq. i'm also a hello. faculty member here at tikran university uh, first of all i'd like to welcome aboard and thank you for accepting our invitation and thank you for coming here and joining us and sharing your knowledge with us. Um, Sammy, I was uh, like, I was going through your, uh, what do you say, your experience and what you have done in the past and all. So would you like to tell us about your one, uh, one drop movement that you've oh. been working on? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that question. You'll probably Welcome. see that I've got my one drop <laughs> around my neck and we've <laughs> yeah. got the uh, the earrings and we've got lapel pins and charm bracelets and all kinds of things. Um, thank you for your question, because this Welcome. is something that's very, very dear to me. And, you know, guys, one of the biggest things that you can do in marketing and branding and advertising is to build a movement or a community around the very thing that you want to sell so uh, about well it was back in 2002 i had this um this epiphany to start my very first business and I, I went on a business course and it was at that course that i saw up on the screen there was a quote that said this individually we are one drop together we are the ocean let me just repeat that. Individually, we are one drop, but together we are the ocean. And I really thought about that. And I thought, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for everybody else in this room? What does that mean for you? Well, what to me it means, my truth of what that means is that when we collaborate and when we partner, we get to create a bigger impact in the world. And so I started a global movement off the back of a documentary that I was in three years ago when I thought, you know, I've been creating a ripple of impact for every single person that I meet. And I wake up every morning before I even open my eyes. I ask for God source energy to flow through me and support me to be the best ripple maker that I can be for the people that are in my life. Any person that I come into contact with, whether I meet somebody whilst walking my dogs or I'm stood here talking to you, supporting you, I wanna be that ripple maker to create that ripple of impact so that you can go and create your ripple of impact in the world. And as a result of starting this global movement to unite over 1 million ripple makers for the purpose of co-creation, I believe that together we can actually create a much better world, a world that we want to live in. And we can do that through partnership. So, um, so for example, guys, say you want to, you create a ripple maker cup, right? Say you, you have a product, a physical product, and you want to sell that. When you build a global movement around this product and say, hey, if you want to be a ripple maker, why don't you join this movement and together we'll create an even greater ripple of impact. Those people then buy into the vision and you will always sell more of that product. Say you have a service, say you are a mentor or a coach or a speaker or a trainer, then you want to build a movement around the topic so that you sell more of that to more people. Because if you create a tribe around anything, and this is really the way that e-commerce is going, the intelligent e-commerce um, champions, they are the ones like Tony Robbins, for example, 
who uh, Dean Graziosi, you might have heard of some of these names, who are creating movements around the message. I have a client who sells wasabi. So he has this massive wasabi farm in New Zealand. And he started farming that wasabi to turn it into wasabi vodka, wasabi health supplements, all, all things wasabi. And I said to him, listen, you want to sell more of these supplements to more people? You, it, this whole thing, what is it really about? What is the real message behind this? What's your story behind this product that you want to sell? And it turns out that they started using wasabi when they were diagnosed with diabetes. And I said, well, how does this work then? And they said, well, when you take wasabi, it naturally is uh, doing all these things in your body that will drop the, the hit that this diabetes is having on your body. And it will actually reduce all of the, the symptoms that you have. And in some cases, it's removed them completely. I said, great, why don't we create a, a movement called Destroy Diabetes? And anybody that has diabetes or is fearful about getting it can go through your program. And guess what? As part of your program, your supplements are included. So they buy the supplements to go through the program. And then you write a book which goes with the program. And then they can go and they can, they can eradicate diabetes for life. And they said, this is just brilliant. It's genius. But really, it's just so simple, isn't it? You're taking a product or a service that solves a problem for somebody. You're creating a story and a message of why it means so much to you to be the person who's selling that. And then you get an army of ambassadors on board who all go out there and start sharing it with everybody because they're getting results. It will dramatically reduce any of your marketing costs because you won't have any because your ambassadors are out there sharing that message and I now have thousands of people who wear the one drop or they have the earrings or they have a lapel pin because when you see somebody who's wearing that you know you can trust them you know that they are part of one drop movement you know you can approach them and they are somebody that will collaborate with you and partner with you and help you to get your message out to the world because this is our symbol of unity mm -hmm. so what could your symbol be what are you selling or what have you seen that somebody else is selling that you think hang on a minute a more intelligent way for you to do that would be to build a movement around it and uh, community and movement that's definitely my superpower every business i've built this is my 10th company now we have three businesses as i say that we're running here and we build movements around every single one of them and therefore i can be here talking to you when i can see that there are payment notifications coming up on my phone while i'm having this conversation with you because it's been set up in that way so guys that's the most intelligent way now through everything that happened to us last year get relational not transactional and i promise you that when you focus more on impact the income will follow the impact that you're making. I really like the idea, like uh, creating the movement, like it's about uh, getting involved, uh, all the people all around the world getting involved with the product. And it's like you're building a product without actually investing in it, like in terms of monetary value, I would say, uh, because people, they are doing it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the biggest, uh, what I would say, that's the biggest uh, or the easiest way to communicate to people about your product. It's a very it brilliant is. idea. Well, I mean, it's very simple, but um, as, uh, as somebody has said here, like a single stick means nothing, but a bunch of sticks, when you merge them together, become unbreakable. unbreakable. And that's true that, uh, you know, we, we become, it's like, if you can imagine when you, when you drop that pebble into the water and you see that it makes that impact, right? I want you to imagine this right now, that pebble hits the surface of the water and you can see the impact that it's made. It's an instant impact. And there are ripples that start ripples, to yeah. outside of that. Well, the, the difference between just selling a product and letting that, that pebble hit the water, you make that sale and then you just let that pebble keep drifting to the bottom and then you never see it again. What I'm talking about is create that ripple of impact in a way that the ripples keep going. And when you build a movement or a community or a tribe, 
around one united message, a story, a message that inspires people, gives people hope, they will keep coming back. So they don't just buy from you once, they buy from you again and again and again, and they become part of the story as well, which is really fabulous. I mean, we run um, once a month, we've just finished the, the latest one. Uh, at the end of every month, we run an impact accelerator called Ripple Fest. So it's like a business festival that's okay, all okay. about creating that ripple of impact. You bring an idea and we work on that idea for a whole week. So you come out of the end of that really owning the identity of the idea, owning the value of it. Where's the value in this? Where's the money in it? Where's the real value? Where's the gift in this for other people? Yeah. So it's not just about you. It's why you, why me, why this? Why now? Why is now the right time? Then you look at what impact you want it to make and then you own the lane of that thing. Like you get really clear about the message and the story behind it. And so many people make the mistake of just having something to sell and going out there and, and trying to sell it. What they don't do is have the idea of the thing that they want to sell and then start asking people about it. So you start getting your ambassadors on board before you've even made it. That's a very intelligent way to do it because then you have people that are constantly out there sharing the message of it. And as the founder behind it, and guys, if you don't want to be the face of it, find someone that will be. One of my clients has, um, he, he's never really been passionate about coffee, yet he's had this idea to bring uh, Indonesian green coffee to coffee roasters in the UK because they can't get hold of it. Right? So it's very difficult apparently to trade with Indonesia and, and go through all the loopholes, but he's from Indonesia. So he understands all of these things. So we had a conversation at Ripple Fest last week and he's been working on the brand and the identity and we tried to work on the story, but it wasn't coming together because it wasn't his story. Okay. And it was very difficult. And we were saying, okay, so we've got this product you're going to ship it to the UK and then you're going to sell it. So it's business to business to consumer. So they're going to sell it to the consumer. You're selling business to business. But we couldn't get the story together. And in the end, we said, listen, this isn't your story, but you can be the back end, the operations of this. You need to find somebody who will be the face of this. Somebody who is so passionate about coffee, somebody who's a connoisseur in coffee, who has the reputation, who has the contacts, who if in effect has a movement around them already. You partner with them and get them to take it to market because it's better to have a percentage of something than 100% of nothing because you can't sell it because you haven't got the story. Story, yeah, exactly. So you want to build that story around anything that you're selling because it's the story that sells, not the facts. Okay, Sammy, there's a question about this uh, movement uh, by Shiraz Ahmed. Can you read it on the chat? Yeah, uh, by creating a movement around the product, won't it get associated with a specific group um, and in turn somehow limit the expansion of the product? No, no, it doesn't. Because what happens is you own a lane. All right, so I would say pick a lane. For example, my lane is brand. I am Sammy Blindell, the brand builder. That puts me in the heart of brand. That's what that's the word that I want to rent a space in your head for. OK, so I only want to be known for one thing. I, I've done so much. I could talk to you about social media, creating mini courses. I could talk to you about e-commerce. I could talk to you about any of the things that I've experienced in my businesses and in the thousands of businesses I've worked with. But I don't want to be known as everything. I want to rent a space in your head for one thing so that when BBC are looking for a branding expert and they type branding into Google, they find me, right? And that's how I started to become a correspondent for BBC because I was showing up everywhere for that one thing. Now, the, the great thing is that when you pick one thing, when you pick one movement, you want to make sure you pick what a movement that is. And in our industry, we say this, it's an inch wide, but it's a mile deep. So there's a lot of depth to that, right? So there's a lot of places you can go. So whereas um, brand is really going into one thing, when I typed the word brand into, um, I use a, an online program, which is completely free, by the way, called answerthepublic.com. 
And certainly in the UK, you can find what anybody is searching for on Google around that keyword. And it will give you an A to Z of everything they're searching for. So I typed in branding, brand strategy, all the things that were aware around the word that I want to rent a space in their head for. I found over 700 different things that people are searching for in that one topic. So no, Shiraz, it doesn't mean that you are totally um, missing an entire audience of people because you pick a lane. What it means is that out of the seven and a half billion people on the planet, you're going to become very highly valuable and oversubscribed to one audience of people who need everything that you do in that one area. It enables you to increase your prices because you become known as the expert in that thing instead of somebody who just knows everything about anything. And if you try and advertise anything and everything, you'll end up with nothing. So do get focused on that. But that doesn't mean that you can't diversify later on. So, for example, I can focus on how to build a personal brand in this conversation. On my next interview, I'm talking about how you build a business brand. On the next interview, I could talk about how do you build a brand on social media, right? But it's all connected to that one movement. So I would pick one movement that is an inch wide so that it's it's focused and it rents a space in, in people's heads for that one keyword that people are looking for. But it's a mile deep in terms of so much content that you could talk about in that subject, yep. in that niche, in that sector, that you're never, ever going to run out of content for it. So, you know, just uh, even with diabetes, you think of how big that topic actually is, even though they've niched, it's a massive topic. That's a topic, yeah. So yeah, I would I would make sure that you um, create something that can diversify or get really, really focused, build it up so it's super successful over two or three years and then diversify into something else. Okay. I hope uh, Shiraz, uh, your, questions has, your question has been answered. Okay, one question that I would like to ask is, uh, is it much easier to integrate or build a brand uh, is it much easier to build a brand which is totally related to e-commerce? Like it doesn't uh, doesn't have a, any physical existence like outlet or anything. It's like you have a just warehouse and you start doing your online business from there itself. Is it easier that way or not? Yeah, you can, you can do that. And you can, and I have made a lot of money doing that. Um, a, a friend of mine, he, he makes a fortune selling pajamas, bedtime where right so he sells yeah. pajamas but where he's made his money guys this is where you actually can be intelligent around your e-commerce strategy where he's really made his money is buying all of the domain names in how that word is misspelled so all of his competitors are spelling it the right way and they're expecting a hundred percent of the traffic but there are eight different ways that people spell pajamas because they spell it wrong in all kinds of different ways. So he went and bought all of the domain names of every way that it is spelled. And he now picks up probably 80% of the searches that people are typing into Google are wrong. And he's picking them all up. So guys, when you are focused on an e-commerce strategy, don't just focus on the thing that you think people are searching for and try and own that also buy up the domain names and, and become found for the different ways that people could be spelling it. So he's making a fortune by picking up like all, it's like the 80-20 rule, isn't it? It's Pareto's law, 80-20. So 20% 20 of the people who are selling pajamas to everyone on the planet, are they're only getting that 20% of the business. He's mopping up the other 80% because he just thought outside the box a little bit. So yes, you can make a phenomenal amount of money and be very successful with e-commerce for sure. I mean, you know, all of our one drop stuff is e-commerce. We've got uh, journals, which you can see there. We've got mugs, caps, t-shirts. We've got all kinds of things. Um, another friend of mine, he sells all kinds of stuff, e-commerce. He makes a fortune. He's making a great living doing that. But what you can also do with e-commerce that I think is incredibly intelligent, another friend of mine, she does product reviews. 
So that's how she drives tons of traffic for free because she's built a movement around her knowledge. She's built a tribe around her being the grenade as such. She'll go in, she'll throw herself into it, she'll buy it, she'll test it, and then she'll do a product review on it. And then what she'll do is she will either, if she loves the product, then she'll tell you about the products and she has the affiliate link or whatever the link is direct to the products that she's selling. But what she'll also do is give some comparisons and say, you could also try this or you could also try this. So she's then making an affiliate income without having to ship anything, without having to do anything. All she is, is the conduit. She's like the conductor between what the audience wants and the people who are selling this thing. Right. So she's making millions, millions because she's built a list of millions of people all around the world who go to her website because they know that they can trust the information that she gives. They can go and do a search to find exactly what they're looking for. And she's probably done a review on that somehow. So she's really showing up for exactly what the audience wants. And I would say that would be another um, really good thing for you to do if you're in an e-commerce business is find the domain name that has the word reviews in it for what you are selling. So if, for example, with Daniel selling his green coffee, if he was selling it just to everybody and not a specific group of people, he could um, go and buy a domain name called Indonesian Green Coffee Reviews dot com. And that would be a source of traffic driving it to the product. See where I'm going with this? Because people look at reviews all the time. But if you're not buying the domain name that has X, Y, Z, whatever it is that you're selling and then reviews in it, then again, you're missing a huge chunk of traffic that could be driving them to your Amazon product or your eBay account, right? So it doesn't matter really what you're selling or where you're selling it. The, the, the ultimate goal is to create as much visibility as possible around that thing. So whether you build a movement in it or you're just trying to create transactional um, process, you still need to, to build that visibility. You still need to build buzz around it. Otherwise, you're missing a huge percentage of, of customers who actually customers, need yeah. what you provide. It's like it's like a puzzle all scattered. So you have to just uh, draw each pieces together. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> It is. But, you know, it's like, um, you know, I mean, you guys have, will have heard the word funnel, I'm sure. That's all this is. It's creating a funnel. Um, but usually what we do is we think of the funnel being like this and we put everything yes. we can in the top and it all squeezes it down until it's in this little sausage machine of people that are just going through it constantly. I want you to think the opposite way around. What if you were to get really focused on that one thing at the top and you just focused on that one thing and you gave that one thing 100% of your energy and attention and then the amount of roots that people can buy it from are down here instead of up there. They're down here, right? So you're focused on the, the product or the service or the, the story behind it. Think of Jack Daniels, for example. I don't know if you know of Jack Daniels, the whiskey, but in, in London, in the UK, when you go on, a, on, on the tube in the center of London, every single tube station, there is a poster that has part of the Jack Daniels story on it. And I've got, I mean, I don't even drink it, but I've got used to when I go down to a tube station, I make sure I get there a little bit early because I want to see what the story is this time. So they've created um, a relationship with me, even though I don't drink it. But if somebody says to me, oh, you know, I'm thinking of buying a bottle of whiskey for somebody, they're the ones that are renting a space in my head. So I'll say, oh, Jack Daniels, they've got a great story. My God, like absolutely wholeheartedly buy from them. You've got to buy from them. It's the story that makes a difference, guys. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, there are a few more questions being asked. Okay, there's one question. How can we design effective programs that can support niche businesses, especially in the crisis like COVID-19? Mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing or the biggest mistake people make is that you create something from a place of assumption. 
So never assume that you know what the client wants. Ask the clients what they want and build it around them. So that's what I would usually do. If I have an idea for something, I'll put it out to my network and say, I'm thinking of creating this. If I were to create the perfect this (laughs) for you um, and we launched it on this date, um, would you be willing to have a quick 15 minute call with me to tell me what you would want in that so that I can create it perfectly for everyone else that's going to buy it and I would put them through that process I would I would enable them to have that process either for free or I would ask them what would it be what would it be worth to them for you to create it around them so that other people can go through it in future and that way you're being paid to create that program before you've even started selling it really so I would I would always um, come up with your idea So the first thing I would say is get really strong around the vision of what it is that you do want to create and what problem that that solves in the world. Because if you're not solving a problem, people aren't going to buy it. So so you need to know what problem is it that you are solving? So, for example, um, in the Brand Builders Club, which is one of my memberships, um, the first problem we solve is brandalism because they've got a brand the makings of it but their logo looks different to their website and what they say is different every time someone says what do you do (laughs) it just comes out differently every time so that's brandalism they don't really have a brand they think they've got one but really they don't so the first thing we do is we get really clear about what is the vision for the business that they want to build? What are the values that that business stands on? So it's non-negotiable. There's no shifty, shaky ground that that business is built on. What are the values behind it? Where's the value in the business? Why should people buy from it? Why should they buy it now? What's the vault behind it? What are they going to find when they open that vault door? What's the treasure they're going to find? You know, like in the movies when they open the vault door and, you know, there's always gold in the vault and they've gone in there to collect it. Well, what are your ideal customers going to find? What's going to be in your vault? What are they going to find when they open the door? So get really clear around that but for the product, not necessarily the business. If, if you're not interested in building a business as such, but you just want to create an e-commerce stream of income, then you would think about what are some of the biggest problems that we can solve right now? Just like Daniel thought to himself, you know, there are so, when he did his research, there were so many things that people were having problems with buying from Indonesia. But one of the biggest things they were having problems with buying was coffee. And so he said, well, out of the five things that I've chosen, I think I'm going to lead with coffee first because that's the one that has the biggest problem right now. So, you know, when you pick that idea, what I promise you is for every problem that you solve, you're going to create another problem. Every problem you solve, you'll create another problem. So at Brand Builders, We solve the problem of brandalism. We get their messaging crisp. They have a beautiful story that people believe in and want to buy into. They have gorgeous branding that really backs up the words they say. And it's completely consistent. But now they've got another problem. We've created a problem. Now they've got this beautiful, amazing, magnetic business and nobody knows they're there. So now we've got to cure the problem of invisibility. And then you cure the problem of invisibility. It creates another problem. Now they're so busy. They're so visible that they don't know how to deal with all the inquiries. So now we've got to solve the problem of systems and procedures. And then we solve that problem. And when we've solved that problem, now they're bored because everything's taken care of. Now they've got a problem in that, actually, I think I'm ready to take the money that I'm making from this business. I want to start putting that into things now. So their next problem is, how do I invest? Well, that's not my skill. So then I hand them to my partners in investing. They can train them on that next step of the way, right? It might be PR, marketing, advertising. I hand them to my partners in PR, marketing and advertising. So for every problem that you solve, you will create another problem. But the great news for you is, especially in e-commerce, that 
there's always somebody else that can solve a problem and you can get a payback for referring them without even delivering anything. All you've got to do is refer the customer and then sit back. So you could have a, a list of affiliate links in your products and say, now you've bought this, you might also want to buy this, this, and this, and you're making an affiliate commission on every single one of those things. You've already done the work driving them to that initial product. Now you can multiply the, the value that you are being paid off the back of that one product. So that's a great way of, of the, I call it the multiplication effect. You're multiplying the amount of income that you have from that one product. So if I sell this mug, for example, I could also sell a pack of coffee. I could guide them to where to get the coffee. I could guide them to get the journal that goes with the coffee. I could guide them to the meditations I've created that go with the journal that can go with the coffee. We're having an essential oil made right now, which can go with the journal, which can go with the coffee. So think of all of the, the add-ons. It's like McDonald's, isn't it? Would you like <laughs> yeah. fries with that? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like fries with that? Right. And what else could you bundle in that massively increases the value of what you're selling? Multiplication effect. That's what you're going for. Exponential. I want to hear that word, guys. Exponential. That's everything I do in my life is around exponential income and exponential freedom. And somebody asked earlier, why do I care so much about what I do or what, what, what got me to what I'm doing now? It was because I almost had a heart attack whilst building five businesses at the same time. Five physical feet on the ground businesses that had staff, fixed costs, couldn't walk away from that, right? Whereas I wanted a life of freedom, something that I could travel, I could buy a boat, be anywhere in the country, and I could still be doing business. I could still be showing up and talking to universities and, and paying it forward and giving back and running events, which we do all the time. And my team handle most of those things, but my team are all over the world. I've got 23 different people all around the world and they're not employed by me. I only pass them business when I actually need them. So now I don't have all those fixed costs. I don't, you know, the only fixed costs I have now are the technology that I use that facilitates the customer journey. And so for me, that was why I now do what I do. That's why I write books. And we just um, literally a, a couple of weeks ago, we published our eighth book, The Law of Brand Attraction 2. And, um, you know, this really talks about owning your identity and your value and your impact and the income that you want to make in the world. And I've got 27 of my Brand Builders Club members talking about that because it's important that you hear from people that have got their feet on the ground. It's not just me. These are people that have gone through my process and are now using that. So I promise you, if you follow the process, it will work. But if you take any part of it out, you know, you can't cut corners because you'll end up going around in circles. That's a very great story. And I also feel like quitting my job now. <laughs> <laughs> do it, do it. I'll see you at the next Ripple Fest at the end of May. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so you have this uh, every year, the Ripple Fest? It's every month. It's We're every month. Every month, yep. So the last week of every month, it's a five day impact accelerator. So we start on the Monday and finish on the Friday. And um, and it's four, we, we get a hundred people visionary business owners together from all different walks of life some haven't even started their business yet and they just have an idea, idea. others have a very established business but they're not happy they're not fulfilled they're not going in the direction that they really want to go and in most cases they've created a busy mess instead of a business Business. So okay. they come to Ripple Fest and we we shape that we shape everything about the idea and them and what they're doing. So um, they actually slow down so that they can speed up. And and uh, and we do it the last week of every month so that because what I found is that when you're building a business, no matter what stage of business that is, when you're building a business, it can be really hard doing it on your own. And when you haven't got other brilliant minds around you saying, oh, I did that. You're about to do something. I made a massive mistake when I did it like that. I, if I were you, if your business were my business, here's how I would do it now. 
And so you cut out all of the mistakes and the stress and the time and the money and the energy that goes down the pan completely. There'll be other people who are going through RippleFest that are e-commerce businesses. There'll be other people that are going through RippleFest who are coming out of the corporate world who have a, a gift inside of them and they just don't know how to package it to take it out there and start selling it. So there's people from all different walks of life and we aim to have around a hundred change makers going through that process so that we can raise money for charity as well. Cause I run it for free. I run okay. it with one of my business partners. It's completely free. We ask for an eight pound donation so that we can pay it forward to charity. And so we just raised over a thousand pounds last week for charities, wow. five charities. We choose five different charities each time because through COVID charities and causes don't have the facility or the ability to get out there fundraising like they did before. before so our exactly. commitment was to give back and pay it forward. So you invest in yourself, you sow into yourself and we can then sow into others for you. And, um, and it creates an infinite multiplication effect. And what you put out there, giving and receiving, they're the same energy. And the more you give, the more you receive. You receive. That's, yeah. that's great. So that's actually it's great. Phenomenal. It's a phenomenal thing to do. And, uh, and then I spend the, re the other three weeks, I'm focused on my business. So I focus on everyone else's business for a week. And then I go back to my businesses and I continue growing my businesses and get very focused. <laughs> focused on my lane <laughs> that's great okay uh there's one question from our student like uh it's uh okay yes yeah, so he is uh already doing an online business he started in 2020 and he's working okay. in man and woman garments products mm -hmm. okay his question is however when i sell a brand's products so it's uh quickly but when i launch in my own brand product it didn't not it didn't go I so didn't well to read it myself because I can't really hear it hear the question yeah, I started really long. online business in 2020 and I'm working on men and women garments however when I sell a brand's product so I sell it quickly but when I launched our own brand products it did not sell any products so I failed third time on our own manufacturer products and I have uh, more okay so question is what should I do to increase our own product and what should I do to increase the value of my product um Mohammed, I, um, I would absolutely 100% focus on getting an ambassador of some kind to sell your product for you because you are the ambassador for other people's garments. You're finding it easy to sell that. I think the problem is you're trying to sell your own thing and your customers or ambassadors should be selling your thing and that way you'll sell more of it. So if you think, especially in the world of clothing, if you got a sponsor, for example, somebody who has a big name, a celebrity, somebody who could be showing the lifestyle that they have as they're wearing your garments, that selling the story, selling the experience is what's going to sell those garments. It's not the garments that you, you're never selling the thing. Right. So I want you to imagine this when you go to a hardware store to buy a drill. What are you actually buying? And I'll help you here, right? <laughs> what are you actually buying? Because you're not buying a drill. You're going to the store to buy a drill, but what you're really buying is a hole. You're buying the hole that the drill is making. And if you go even further than that, it might be that somebody needs the drill because they need to put shelves up because their space is small. So what you're actually buying then is more space because you're going to put shelves up. So the drill is the facilitator of creating that environment. When you buy um, a light bulb, you're, you're selling vision. You're not selling a light bulb, you're selling vision, the ability to be able to see. So you've got to go beyond selling the actual garment. You've got to go beyond selling the cup or selling the jewelry. You've got to go beyond selling the book. You've got to sell the difference that that thing makes and the easiest way to sell product like clothing is to have somebody else modeling it for you it's why gucci pay for actors and actresses to to demonstrate the experience of what it's like to wear the perfume or to carry the handbag right so you need to be selling the experience of it not it
Does that make sense? You need to sell the sizzle, not the steak. <laughs> You're selling the sizzle, not the steak. Okay, so um, I hope that answers your question, Mohammed. because in the time that we have here, which isn't very much, um, you know, I, I would get yourself onto Ripple Fest. Get onto the next Ripple Fest is at the end of May. Get yourself onto it. Put yourself through it. It's a, it's a great business brand and impact accelerator. And at the, the worst thing that will happen is you will come out of it. You will have grown yourself. And when you grow yourself, your business then has the potential to grow. Um, how can I find what will be the best business for me to do? That's a great question. We just actually answered that question on the last Ripple <laughs> Fest which is all around really how can you own the gift and the purpose for which you are here and if that if if you want to just sell any product or service or you want to go into e-commerce and sell something as someone else's because you don't want to create your own thing then you would just get really clear about what do you stand for again it comes back to your values what do you stand for what do you stand against? If you stand for quality relationships, for example, and freedom and fun, you don't want to sell a, any kind of product or service that pins you down. So you have to be in one place, right? So you want to look at your values first and look at the vision for the life that you want to live. Because if you know what your vision is and you know what the values are, you can start picking products or even a business. You can think, okay, well, in that case, I need a business that gives me these things because the business is there and the products are there to help you buy that life, <laughs> to help you live the life that you want to live. So get clear about your, your vision of what you want for your life. Get clear about the values behind that. Um, if, you, um, if you want to, I'll just type it in here um how to build a brand.org if you want to go through a values activity if you go to my website in the startup resources section you'll find a values questionnaire you can go in you just give it your name and email so i can send it to you and then um, you can go through that values questionnaire and get really clear about what is it that's important to you and as you go through that process i want you to ask yourself this question is that so say for example you see freedom right or growth and you think yeah growth is really important to me i want you to ask yourself is growth what i want to do or is growth who i am because a value is what is who you are not what you do right so if growth is a result that's great it's an outcome so then you would want to choose a value that's important to you that leads you to growth. But growth won't be your value because growth isn't who you are. Do you see what, what I mean there? So it's about, you know, really think, who am I? When I am being myself, when I am operating in my superpowers, when I'm at my happiest, when I'm filled with the most joy, who am I being? And for me, I'm being free. I'm being creative. I'm being fun, right? And so that means for me that if my highest core values are freedom, creativity, and fun, if somebody asks me to do something and it takes me away from my freedom, I can't be creative and it's not going to be fun to do, I'll say no, because it's not making the boat go faster. So go, guys, I built five businesses doing something that I could not because I should, but because I could. And I burned out and almost had a heart attack. That's why I build businesses now that give me freedom, that keep me in my creativity, and they're all fun. If it's not fun, I don't do it. And if it starts to become that it's not fun, I think, what's wrong with this picture? But I'm very clear about the life that I want and my businesses give me that life. It's not the other way around. Don't give your life to your business because it's not worth it. Give the, the business to your life. That's a really okay. great idea. <laughs> so, Tashan, would you like to contribute anything? Uh, well, I'm uh, listening to the valuable knowledge that she's imparting. And 
I have one question uh, considering uh, the new marketplace that we, uh, we see right now that is Amazon. So what do you think, uh, what, what are the strategies that we as a marketeer can do to uh, increase uh, the product reach to the masses on Amazon specifically? On Amazon specifically? Uh, well, our Amazon has its own algorithm uh, for a start. So uh, you have no ownership. That's the only thing I would say is when you're selling anything on Amazon uh, or eBay, although eBay is much easier, I think. But if you're selling something on Amazon, you're already working um, to their tune, not your own. So I and again, you know, I would be looking at what strategies could I use that would drive people to that Amazon product or that Amazon account, which again is visibility. So it actually doesn't matter where you host your product or service. What matters is the buzz that you build around it. So um, for example, you could start a blog. Uh, one of our clients, he has a, a company called Technology Blogged. And it's a, it started off as just a blog and now it's a full blown business, right? He started off doing what my friend Sarah that I spoke about earlier, who reviews products. He started off just doing that. And, um, and all of it was in the world of technology. And he started getting Apple sending products to him to review. He started getting all the best equipment sent to him from all these different technology companies so that he would test them and give them a review, whether good or bad. They prayed for a good one, but he would he would review them. And that's how it started. And that's now turned into a full blown business that he, he gave up the job that he had. And he now just does that. And he gets sent the most amazing technology, VR headsets and all kinds of things, right? So that he'll do a review on them. And, you know, and then he sells, he has products on Amazon that he drives people to because now he's, he's selling the knowledge. He's not selling the product. He's selling the knowledge around should, what product should I buy? And that's what people are really looking for. So if all you do, um, Tesham, is drive people just to your Amazon account or pray that people are going to find it, <laughs> you could use the spray and pray approach, which many people do, but that doesn't give you consistent results. It doesn't give you any kind of predictability. So I would be creating predictable funnels to each of those products. And actually you will always sell more of them. So, so think about some of the ways you could do that. YouTube, YouTube is like, I mean, Google owns it, obviously. I would say that probably YouTube now outweighs people Googling things. People are now YouTubing things in the way that we used to Google stuff, right? So YouTube's probably the biggest search engine on the planet now. People exactly, are gonna go yeah. to YouTube, they're gonna find the, um, a review for the product or they're gonna find you as the expert or whoever you find as the face for that. They're gonna find that person and every single one of those videos are gonna drive them back to your Amazon products. So you create um, a wheel. Think of your product being in the center of the spoke of the wheel and you have all of the spokes that are bringing everything back to the center. So that you know a wheel can be really strong when it has spokes in it, but a, but a little dot with a big ring around it and nothing that's connecting the outer ring, your customers that are waiting, they're looking for that little dot in the middle. But if you've got no spokes that are connecting them, a bit like a web, <laughs> if you can't connect them back to your product, if, if all roads do not lead back to that, then you have an issue. You're, you're always gonna have a gap in your cash flow. And, I, you know, one of my clients uh, many years ago, he sells metal sheds. His e-commerce business is selling metal sheds and he wasn't doing very well. And he came to us and said, how can I how can I be selling more of these sheds? Because it's not the sexiest product on the planet. So uh, so we looked at, OK, how can we make it sexy, though? Because it's sexy to someone. And we looked at. Um, eventually we came up with a strategy of 101 different ways somebody could use that product. Somebody could use that metal shed. So it became, just give me one second, Bob, stop. Yeah. I have dogs on the boat and they're just, <laughs> they're just working their way out in the pecking order. Um, so we said 101 different ways to sell, uh, to use a metal shed. So it became a bike store. 
a fishing rod store, a man cave, a sewing machine store. It became, you know, um, a workshop. It became 101 different things. It was one shed, but we could use it 101 different ways. And that's what we did. We created a video of the product being used for that thing. So if we were selling it as a bike store, we put bikes in it. We showed somebody wheeling their bike into it and it became a safe place that they could put their bike that would be safe and they would know their bike would still be there when they went back to it. So we sold safety was what we sold. We sold predictability to them. Certainty is what you're always selling. So we, we did that. We created a blog post on their website we fed the video into that blog post. So now we had the multiplication effect of how many times it could get found from different places. And we started to drive social media traffic to that product. Their business increased by 476% in three months. Wow. So, you know, and that was before we even finished the 101 different ways. I think we got to about six different ways because we worked thoroughly on each one. We didn't just go, we didn't just knock them all out. We said, let's pick a lane. A bike store is the lane. So remember we asked the question earlier, but if you only choose one thing, is that going to stop you from growing? No, because it's a vertical market. So we just pick that one thing first and we drive everything to that one thing so that Google is absolutely finding it everywhere. And it's all going to your Amazon account or wherever. It doesn't matter where you're selling it. What matters is that you've got the traffic that you drive to it. And then we focused on the next thing and then the next thing. So, get you know, guys, if you if you try to, to create 100 percent of results, by only giving something 5% of your attention, you're not gonna get 100% results from that. Give one thing 100% of your attention, you'll get 100% of the results. And then you move on. And then you get 100% of the results from that. And then 100% of the results from that. A book that I'm writing at the moment is all on how to build a personal brand. And when I got to the end of writing that book, it's written, it's ready to be published, but we published this other one first. When I got to the end of that book, I realized that there were 12 different mini courses that I could create to help somebody now. Now we've fleshed out the skeleton of what does it take to build a personal brand? Well, how do you build a personal brand on Facebook? How do you build a personal brand on Instagram? How do you build a personal brand on Spotify? How do you build a personal brand on Amazon. How do you build? It? There's so many different ways you can now, you know, it's that sentence and then just fill something. It's again, it's 101 different ways that you could sell one thing. But just give it your commitment and attention, guys, because you will get the return on your investment. Even if that's time, money, energy, you'll get the return on it. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. I mean, these are big topics we could talk about. <laughs> I, run, I run courses for, for days on these things. So, um, yes, I, I can imagine like you're writing books on it. So yeah, it's a very, very long topic. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. okay, there's one more question, last question uh, from Shiraz again, I think. How can we be visible all the time and try not to come off as desperate to sell our product? So like I said to you guys, you build a movement or a community around the product and then there's no desperation around it because everyone's just excited about the buzz around the topic of conversation. So what is the topic of conversation that you want everybody to build a buzz around? And then there's no desperation in that, right? There's no desperation at all. Um, with Ripple Fest, for example, the what we want to do, our outcome is to raise the vibration of you. So the, the, the vibration of your business is operating at the highest vibration that it can be. The energy that you put into yourself is the energy that you're going to put out. And if you're if there's any part of you that doesn't believe like you're creating this successful business or you're this successful Amazon account, but there's part of you that believes that, oh, you know, I don't think that I can be successful in this. Well, you've got your foot on the brake and the accelerator at the same time. 
and the universe, God, source, it doesn't reward you for that. You've got to have your foot on the accelerator and take your foot off the brake. So I would say, you know, just just get really clear about the story around the product. You know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders, 76 years old or whatever he was, starts going door to door selling his chicken. There's a story behind it, right? Find the story. There is going to be a story behind why you have chosen that specific product or service. That's what you need to focus on. And if you focus on the story, the story sells it. You don't sell it. The story then sells it. That's when you know that you have a brand because your brand is what other people say it is when you're not there. If you don't have ambassadors talking about your products and services, then you have no brand. What you have is a shop that maybe has some customers. So, you know, create a brand around it and uh, and you will you'll sell loads of it and you won't even have to sell. But you've got to master that process. Get yourselves to Ripple Fest. We can teach you this. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, the, there was this, uh, I think uh, we are towards the end of the session. There's just one last question from Gazamfer. He's asking, does good communication skills matter in marketing? Um, the person who's marketing it needs to have good com communication skills. As a business owner, you don't have to. If you've got somebody who is really good at it, then you get them doing it. The most critical, the most critical skill you can use in marketing is not necessarily about the communication, it's listening. You've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Act accordingly. Listen to what your audience wants. Stop trying to push and promote and communicate in every different way you can as to why they've got to buy this thing. Ask them, what do they need? Why do they need it? And you'll find, you know, if you go into forums, community groups, you'll see there's pain hemorrhaging everywhere. You don't have to physically ask somebody. It's right in front of you. You could even go on to answerthepublic.com, as I mentioned earlier, and type in the thing that you think people are searching for to find that product or service. And you'll find the conversation that's being had around it. So don't make the assumption and go in there and think that communication skills is all you need because active listening is actually way more important than the communication piece. If you can't hear what your audience want, you can be the best communicator in the world, but you could be communicating the wrong thing to the right people. So get clear on what is it they want and then communicate with them in an honest way. Because if even if you, even if you have a lisp or, a, a, you know, some kind of um, issue that stops you being able to communicate, as long as it comes from your heart, people will hear it. Perfection is poverty, is what I would say. That's a great tip. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, so, so, Sean, what do you say? Shall we conclude the session or what? Yeah, yeah, I guess uh, we were given one hour for it and it's about time. So thank you so much, uh, Sammy, for uh, sparing your time and sharing your knowledge with us and with our students. And we are looking forward to collaborate uh, in future sessions as well. And uh, please do share the link uh, that how we can join uh, that uh, Ripple session. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I put it in the um, the the panel here in the chat there. Um, so it's ripplefestquest.com. I can just put it there for you again. Ripplefestquest.com. So if you are on a quest to make a bigger ripple of impact, but have fun while you do it, guys, because that's one of my core values. If you're not somebody that likes fun and and, in, and likes to enjoy things and and be part of a community that really want to raise the vibe, then it's not for you. 
right? It, it, this is a community that are very serious about making a ripple of impact and creating products and services that people actually want. But we believe in having fun while you do that. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we do play music. It's like a festival, right? We have fun while we're doing business. And I bring in the best experts in the world who I've been on documentaries with. I speak on big stages to thousands of people very regularly. And these are people that have got millions of customers, guys, millions. Of, why would you try and learn this for yourself? One of my friends, Natalie, she's got a business that has 6 million customers. I got her to Ripple Fest and said, tell everyone, if you could do it all over again, what would you do? And she tells you, well, I wouldn't do this. Here's what I would do if I did it all again. Here's what cost me 10 years. Here's what I, if I could do this in six months again, here are the things that I would do. So guys, don't try and do this on your own. You don't have to be lonely in business. It is a lonely world trying to do it on your own. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I certainly, I would have shaved at least five years off of my learning if I'd have had a me, but I didn't have a me. And so now I cut that time off of my client's journey. So, um, so guys, you know, get, get access to it. It's eight pounds. A hundred percent of it goes to charity. Invest in yourself and we'll work out where the money's going to go to the charities. But I promise you, it goes directly to the causes. It doesn't go to admin. It goes to the causes that need the help. Um, and we played a video, actually. There's a, um, there's a, a, a gorgeous orphanage in South Africa that we support and we just sent them I think it was like 10,000 rand a few days ago and um, and she's got 22 children that she's taken in through COVID who were wandering the streets who didn't have families their families had died or abandoned them they had no food the clothes on their back they had no education no way of finding any anyone that could look after them and this one woman set on a mission to look after these children she took them into her home and she's been looking after them she has no she's had to give her job up and everything she's got these 22 kids that that she, she's taken on full time and so uh, one of my friends who who actually lives on a boat a couple of boats down from me uh, she was telling me about this orphanage and how she's really struggling to feed and clothe these kids and i said i think we can help here i think that at ripple fest we can contribute some some money towards that and they just sent us yesterday a video of the kids wearing their new clothes and singing and saying thank you because now they've got food in their belly the woman can keep a roof over their head because we're we're facilitating that so guys you invest in yourself and by doing that i want you to know that you are investing in others so become an investor in people not just in products become an investor in people and as you grow yourself, so your business will grow. I promise you that. I hope uh, uh, I hope that everyone here will find their quest and they will start creating the ripple and they will join your movement soon. I hope so. Absolutely. I do too. Because <laughs> You know, I don't want to do this on my own. I want to have fun making that ripple of impact. And if I can make a ripple of impact through you, then I'm serving my purpose. I'm in my gift while I'm supporting you to not just create a pebble that drops in the water and makes a sale, but to create a ripple of impact that touches every corner of the earth. I mean, imagine if you could sell a product or service that made such a difference to people that you reached thousands, maybe even millions of people with the one thing that you're selling. I mean, how cool would that be? If I can be a facilitator in that change, then is it not my duty and my job to make sure that that happens? I believe so. That's great. No, that's great, actually. Okay. I think this session will be turning off soon on its own because I think it was set for one hour. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so before that happens, I just so want nice to quickly say... <laughs> Thank you for your questions. Brilliant questions. <laughs> and thank you for joining us, uh, Sammy. It was a pleasure having you with us and sharing your knowledge with us. It was quite informative. And soon, hopefully soon, I will be joining your movement too. Yay! Well, you can do it part-time, remember. We've got people that are doing it on the side and they're just getting to the point where they're building their business up so that they can 
fire themselves <laughs> they, can, <laughs> they can sack their boss and actually do the thing that gives them the freedom making money doing what they love so yes i look forward to that i'm going to hold your hold you accountable to that farouk uh, i'm not going to say that i will be like you know i won't use the fire word here because it's getting recorded but yeah i will join you <laughs> Well, you can fire yourself. <laughs> okay. Love it. Okay. 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 The uh, students are also saying thank you for, for your time and knowledge. You're very welcome. All right. Thank you so much, Sammy. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. care. God bless you. Likewise. Thank you once again. You're very welcome.